If you've had any cryptid encounters that you'd like shared on here, email me at jttosstories at gmail.com. Story 1. When I tell people that I saw Bigfoot, they don't believe me, so I hope that people do now. Back when I was nine years old, my grandma, my brother, and I went on a hike in the mountains. We were going up to a trail, and I had that feeling of being watched. I looked where I thought the feeling was coming from, and that is where I saw it. It was a creature that was around seven to eight feet tall, and looked to be around 600 to 700 pounds and covered in dark brown hair. It watched us from behind a tree. At this point in my life, I believed in cryptids, but Bigfoot was my greatest fear, so when I saw this thing, I was frozen in fear. My brother and grandma were talking to each other, so I was not going to get their attention, because once they start talking about something, nothing stops them. I tried to slowly back away, and when I got to about 50 yards away, it grunted, and that made me stop dead. It got from behind the tree so I could see this thing completely, and it turned and walked off. Now I know why there isn't much video or picture evidence of these things. People are too afraid to even move. I now love trying to find evidence of Bigfoot, but still, I'm careful of what I do, because you don't know what you could find. Story 2 this was my uncle's encounter, and one of my third or fourth cousins. Although I've never spoken with my cousin about this, his account was only what my uncle told me. This happened nearly 50 years ago, but my uncle still remembers it clearly. I'll provide a bit of info on the area and our family. We lived in the family farmhouse with my grandparents, the last house on a dead-end country road. The small community, about eight or nine homes, was referred to by locals as Thames River Siding, but really, it had no official name. That name derived from the close-by station name sign of the CN Railroad. The road went out and met another road at a T-intersection. To the right, went over the tracks, then down through a ravine and out to a main country road, and to the left, the road went through open fields for a mile or so, then turned 90 degrees and went over to the next secondary county road, where it ended again very near to another ravine on the left side. Our family had a band started by my grandfather. He, my mom, uncle, and two cousins were in it. On this particular night, they had met for practice, which by 11 or 11.30 was winding down. Our one cousin left, and the remaining cousin helped my uncle tear down and put away the equipment, well, my grandfather tended to the animals, which seemed very spooked and nervous, which really wasn't out of the ordinary, as there was a pack of wild dogs that made their way through every so often for a few years back then. Cousin left and headed home. His way took him out to the left at the end of the road, and over at the next intersection is where he had the first of two encounters, but they wouldn't become known for a few days. My uncle left ten minutes or so afterwards, and his way home took him to the right, over to the main road. This particular night was either a full moon, or very nearly a full moon, as my uncle said, it was a very bright night. He crossed the tracks and went down through the ravine, and as he approached the stop sign, something in the field to his right caught his eye. There was something large and tall, standing sort of hunched forward, and staring intently in his direction. This happened just as he was on the brakes, slowing down to stop, but also starting to angle the car for the left-hand turn about to be made. His sight of this thing went from glancing to his right to over his shoulder, then to the rearview mirror as the car stopped. He sat staring for what seemed like hours, he said, but it was only seconds. Then this thing broke into a sprint directly at the car. My uncle said he was in a trace of disbeliefment, like his brain couldn't comprehend what his eyes were seeing. Now, the field isn't an overly large field, but it would still be four or five hundred yards between the tree line and the road, and this thing covered it fast. My uncle snapped out of his trance and peeled out of there as fast as he could, watching in the rearview mirror the whole time. This thing was close enough to be illuminated by the taillights, and was reaching out for the car as he peeled out. He said it ran on two feet, not on all fours, or even partly on all fours. Two feet. It had dark colored hair, either brown or black, appeared to have a muzzle similar to a dog, 
and a pointed ears on top of the head, and the eyes appeared to glow a dim yellowish orange. He said one strange thing was he felt as if he wasn't looking at the car, but as if it was looking at him in the car. That was about as detailed as he could get, only seeing it briefly like that. He raced home and called back to the house and told them to lock the doors and stay inside. My grandfather asked why, my uncle said, just do it. I seen something in the field, but I'm not sure what. Just lock up to be safe. That was the last and only time he saw something like that. A few days later, at the next band practice, my uncle and cousin were sitting outside having a smoke. And my uncle told him about what he saw, expecting to be made fun of or called crazy. But instead, he said that he had also seen something that night on the way home. As he was approaching the stop, something ran across the road in front of him, making him hit the brakes and almost get off the road. He said he only saw it for a split second as it was moving, but from what he could see of it, it looked like a massive dog or wolf, but looked like it was upright on two legs. It could have been the same way. It seemed to bound or jump over the road. He more or less described the exact same thing my uncle had seen. Whatever it was, covered a good two miles, which include navigating some densely wooded areas and a steep side ravine in only a matter of 10 minutes at most. So it was definitely fast. There were reports of strange noises like growling, howls, or barks in the woods along the Thames River and around some of the farms in and around the time of these sightings. And he said there was some livestock found dead and partially eaten but everyone tossed that up to the wild dogs that were around at the time. But my uncle knows that was no dog that he had ever seen. No one else ever came forward having reported anything. So I grew up out in the countryside of northern Indiana. This encounter happened when I was in seventh grade. We had a trash pile where we burned our garbage, and my mom had me take a bag out at around 10 p.m. I grew up in the woods around our house and was not afraid of the dark, so I didn't have any reason to be hallucinating or seeing shapes in the dark as kids do. I had never been afraid of the dark until this point in time. I took the bag out and walked the short distance down the road to our trash pile. I was about to throw our garbage on top before I saw something standing about a car's length from the pile. Whatever this thing was, it was towering over me, and I was tall for someone around my age, being 13. This thing loomed over me. It had to have been over 10 feet tall. We just stared at each other for a long minute, and that is when I noticed it had dark midnight fur and bright red, almost glowing in the dark eyes. I was frozen. Then, just turned around and stomped back into the woods. It was very fast, and to me, the weight of this thing was making the floor of the woods vibrate. I screamed and dropped the bag in the road and ran as fast as I could back to the house. My mother saw that I was acting like I was in shock and could hardly breathe. My state of mind obviously disturbed her, and after I told her what happened, she let me stay home from school for the rest of the week. Fast forward about five years, where I'm living with my aunt at this point in time. One night, my aunt had some friends of the family over, and I heard a conversation that piqued my interest. My aunt was telling our family friend about seeing a pair of red, glowing eyes staring in at her, from a ten-foot-tall window in her trailer. One of those weird small things that are towards the top in the bathroom. The same place that I saw that tall man-beast thing. I told her what happened to me, and her jaw dropped. That was probably the most satisfying thing that happened to me. Hearing it from another person made my experience feel authentic, and made me think that I wasn't crazy anymore.